So this is the Sting Box, and it arrived in the mail to me yesterday. The nice folks over at Sting Box uh, sent this over at my request. This is a network intrusion detection device, as well as honeypot, meaning that uh, basically if a new device connects to your network, it will send you a notification either via text, email, or phone calls. So uh, let's take a step back and uh, unbox this thing and uh, kind of get an idea of the setup process and what it does. All right, so this is the Stingbox Honeypot, like it says right there. Uh, not a lot on the packaging. This is actually what they sent it in. Uh, so let's get this thing opened up. I actually haven't opened this up yet, other than to uh, put some tape along the side there uh, to block everything. Oh, dude, that's cool. Uh, love, love that. That's really neat. This is a, a big old sticker uh, that'll probably go somewhere. Love that. That's cool. Uh, of course, we always love stickers. Love stickers. So... Uh, this is uh, just a quick uh, business card there uh, that talks about how to set it up. And of course, a, a website URL, a website URL that you can go to to learn how to set this up if you're not sure. Let's open up this box. Uh, let's see what's in here. Okay, so we have a power supply. Uh, it is five volts, two amps, so about 10 watts, and a micro USB uh, type B there. So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside as well. And then we've got some bubble wrap. We're gonna set the actual device aside for just a moment here. A little patch cable uh, to plug into your switch or your router, your modem or whatever it is you use. So we're gonna definitely use that uh, here in a minute. Uh, but here is the device right here. This is the Sting Box. Uh, and it is, it is very, very straightforward. There's a code on the bottom uh, that I will use to set that up later. Of course, we got some branding there uh, that matches the, you know, the rest of their branding, their, their card and the, this big sticker. Um, but this thing, this thing's tiny, uh, just a couple inch of inches square by maybe like an inch and a half tall. Um, on this end, we've got a, a, a gigabit LAN port, I would assume, USB port. And then on the front, uh, we've got our on-the-go uh, USB supply there. And then... Uh, we've got a, uh, a micro SD card, a TF card right there. Uh, I appreciate they're using SanDisk Ultra. That's a 16 gig card. So that's it. Like that's really all there is to this. Uh, I, I, I was kind of expecting more with regards to the unboxing. Uh, it's not to degrade them. I just, I don't know. I guess I didn't have any expectations as far as what this was. So uh, with all of that said, let's, I guess, get this thing plugged in uh, and see about uh, heading over to the desktop and getting it set up. Uh, so that we can uh, see what it does. Okay, so we've got it all plugged in over here on my rack. I will put some payroll up right here so you can see that. And here we are on the simple setup, less than five minutes. So we've designed the setup to be quick and easy. If you make a mistake, simply disconnect your sting box and start over. So click on any of the steps below. So we're gonna connect our sting box to the network. You just provide an ethernet cable to plug into the back of your network router or anywhere. You have an open RJ45, we've done that. Um, and then of course we've plugged that into the device, uh, connect the sting box to power. We've done that with the micro USB uh, and wall ward. That is all connected. And look for green lights to verify setup. If your sting box has power and properly connected to your local network, you'll see a little green flashing light. Uh, amber light to the left of the ethernet connector on your sting box. Let's see. Oh, you gotta kind of look through it in order to, to see what's going on there. Uh, so I, I, do have, I do have the green light, so that's good. Oops, so let's go back. So we're now we're going to register uh, at stingbox.com. So we're gonna click that. Uh, we're just gonna pop that open in a new window there. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and enter, we're gonna click register. And I'm gonna go ahead and just register. And then once I'm done with the register, man, that yellow screws up this lighting, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and register. When we get to the next page, uh, we'll come back and uh, move on from there for the rest of the process. Okay, so I've gone ahead and registered. We're still on this yellow page that really screws up this lighting, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. Okay, this is cool. So here's our dashboard. Uh, so right now we want to add a sting box using a code. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And so right here, it's asking for the 10 character string that was on the bottom of the device. So I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna put that in. Uh, and then we're gonna go on to the next step here and we'll click add sting box. Okay, that's cool. So now we have uh, our IP address. Let's actually just see if we can do anything with that. Nope, that's... That's fine, okay. So now we're gonna to return to our dashboard. Okay, so we've got one Stingbox monitor. We've got alert method, so let's manage our alerts. Let's see how this works. Okay, so it's got uh, active alert methods, critical alerts, important alerts, uh, inform information alerts. 
that's all good. Now, if I wanted to add additional uh, alert types here, I could put in another email address. Uh, I, for text messages, I could put in a number there or for a phone number. Uh, so there's definitely, definitely different ways that I could go about setting up any kind of notifications that I needed uh, for, for my network. Um, and of course, they've got definition, uh, alert definitions for critical, important, and informational. Uh, I will be getting all of those via email. So we're gonna go back to the previous page. Uh, that's good. Active hosts in the last 24 hours, we've got 42. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, interesting. So this gives us an idea of what all of our IP addresses are. Uh, and of course, which, uh, which sting box has uh, detected them, uh, when they were last seen, uh, when they or what their uh, open file shares. So uh, some of these uh, do, is the noon technology? I don't, not entirely sure what that is. What is, oops. Oh, huh, okay, that makes sense. That is, <laughs> that's one of my NAS devices. That's good, uh, which means that is probably also, oops, a NAS device or an open media vault or something. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, okay, so here is my other, um, oops, no, there we go. Yep, so there's my other one, uh, Espressif. So like all of these Espressifs are uh, cheap Chinese light bulbs. Uh, Lattice work, uh, that's actually one of the file sharing devices that I've got. I did a video on a bunch of that a while back. So there's, I really do dig that there's, uh, that it kind of gives what it can uh, as far as information based on uh, the the uh, the MAC address. So I really dig that. Um, let's see, dashboard, all discovered hosts. Okay. So this gives us at least an idea of what's on our network at any given time. Now, we'll be curious to see what happens uh, when a new device is added. So I might... I might spin up a VM or something and see if I get a notification at some point uh, to uh, to let me know that something new is on the network. Uh, but I do like that it's got all of this information uh, so that it's very, very easy to see what's going on. Uh, external ports open in the last 30 days. Um, this isn't this isn't accurate. Uh, I do know that I've got uh, 80 and 443 open uh, for, for one service that I'm running on Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, for technical reasons. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm I'm not, maybe, maybe I just need some time uh, to go through and set stuff up. It did just need some time. I did get an email later that evening letting me know that those ports were open. Um, if we can view alerts and hosts, uh, let's view alerts, see if there's anything there. So there's all of this. Um, okay, this says when, uh, I added the dashboard and this is all of the devices having been added. So at this point, really the only thing I can do is uh, just kind of hang out, let it sit for a couple of days uh, and see what happens uh, when other devices or other uh, systems attach to the network to see if I get a notification. So uh, at this point, I'm just gonna cut it. We'll come back here in a few days and take another look at the setup. Okay, so we didn't wait a few days. It's actually just tomorrow now. And uh, I've actually got some cool stuff to show you with this uh, device and that sort of thing. So let's jump over to my desktop here real quick. Uh, here we can see that it finally did, uh, like we noted earlier in the video, it did actually show me ports 40, 443 and 80 were open. That's good. Glad to see that. Of course, the email I got right before that was, hey, uh, your router attached, which I thought was kind of a weird thing. But uh, so basically this, uh, this kind of uh, scans things every five minutes, sends notifications as necessary every 10 minutes. However, port scanning and that sort of thing uh, are a little bit different as far as how the scans work and they don't scan, you know, like every five minutes. So it took some time for this to happen. And here we can see that it did finally come through, letting me know that those ports were open. Uh, also, if we take a look uh, at this previous email right here, we've got a new uh, attacker recorded session. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. Okay, so here I am on my dashboard. We've seen this, we've looked at this, we've gone through all these different areas. What I'm gonna do is actually come down to right here. And here we can see that we've got, you know, all of the notifications that we got via email, which was great. This is what you would expect to see here. But uh, what we can also do here, uh, where it says, click here to watch session. When I first saw that, I was like, what? Uh, and uh, so let's let's just bring this up. Here is our, our screen. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Root at 192.168.1.55. That's the IP address of the device on my network. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Um, now, of course, the first time I did that, it said, hey, this is a new device. Are you sure you wanna do that? And I said, yes, you'll see that the first time you try to log in to your device, but I've already done that, so we're not seeing it. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to mash on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit enter. Hey, look. I'm logged in because there's no credentials to log in. 
So basically at this point, once I logged in, uh, the, the device triggered a record event. So anything I type here, this is something I'm uh, typing incorrectly, right? And I'll hit enter, of course, nothing there, right? So <clears throat> at this point, I can just, I just exit, whatever. Uh, so now that's closed and I can close this. And then uh, here very shortly, I should get an email letting me know uh, that there was uh, 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 an, uh, an attack on my network. So we're gonna come back once that email comes through so that we can actually relive the moment we just had. Okay, so while we're waiting for that email to come through, let's talk about who the sting box is actually for, because the reality is, Stingbox is not geared for people like you and me. It's not meant to be put on our networks because the reality is most of us are gonna be tech savvy enough to set up our own uh, honey pots and network monitoring tools and that sort of thing. So Stingbox is, is kind of more geared towards MSPs or managed service providers. Uh, so, so basically companies that get hired by other companies to manage infrastructure, uh, specifically in this case, networking. Now, the reality is that, that people like us, the more tech savvy crowd, uh, already have network monitoring monitoring is set up and alerts set up and things like that. However, uh, on the flip side of that, whether you realize it or not, there's a good chance that you are an MSP already uh, for your friends, your family, your parents, your grandparents, people who are less tech savvy than you are. You're probably the person who gets the phone call, the text message, the email, the whatever saying, hey, I'm having problems with blank. Uh, so uh, by no fault of your own, uh, you are an MSP most likely. And that is where this kind of this this device kind of comes into play here, uh, for for a small fee every month, uh, depending on the number of devices you get. I will have a couple of links in the description down below. If you just want to order a couple of devices, there'll be one link. If you want to order, I think five or more, there will be a separate link uh, where you can actually get discounted pricing for these devices. Uh, this is a paid subscription, just be aware of that. Uh, but it's less than twenty bucks a month per device. Again, the more devices you get, you start getting discounts, that sort of thing. So something to keep in mind there. However, um, this will, of course, like I said. Let you know uh, any new devices that are connected to the network. It will let you know uh, ports that are open. It will let you know uh, basically if somebody has infiltrated your network and has started attacking, uh, in this case, the, the sting box itself. Uh, when that email comes through, I will show you uh, the thing we already did, but, um, but it will also let you know if your network is down. If it can't ping, if, if, if the Stingbox service can't ping the Stingbox device, uh, you'll get an email or a text message or whatever you've signed up for with regards to notifications, letting you know that your network is down. So again, while this device isn't necessarily geared towards people like us, uh, as far as our own networks, as far as a management tool to help monitor the network of, of again, friends, family, whatever, or, or again, uh, businesses that we might be uh, providing services to, this is a great way to, to do that at a, at, a, at a low cost that of course, if you were charging a, 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 a person, a company or whatever, you could effectively pass that on to them. And uh, what I actually really dig about uh, about Stingbox is that they can actually customize these boxes to uh, to your branding. So this is the email I got from Paul over at Stingbox uh, to show my branding on their hardware. Again, this is kind of one of those things that if you were uh, an MSP, whether it's, you know, for your for your friends and family, or in this case, more realistically for other businesses, you could put your branding on the device and they would always know whose hardware that was, where it came from and what it is, what it does, that sort of thing. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump back over to our Stingbox dashboard and take a look at the video of me infiltrating my own network here. So here we are. Here is that session that we just got an email about. I'm going to go ahead and click that open. I'm going to go ahead and click play and make this large. And here we can see uh, just, just as proof that it really is recording uh, what I did when I infiltrated the box earlier. So guys, that is Stinkbox in a nutshell. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this. If this is something that you would implement for your friends and family, or if you're an MSP who might deploy this for your clients. Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. Of course, links to everything uh, and more information in the description. Uh, also, while you're down there, there are a few different ways that you can support the channel. If you wanted to do that, of course, no obligation, but certain ways of supporting the channel will get you early access to ad free content. So there's that to think about. Uh, with all of that said, I do want to say thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.